So we're going to begin with section 4.2, relationships between categorical variables. And I'm beginning with 4.2 rather than uh, 4.1, because I think it is a little bit easier than section uh, 4.1. So far, everything we've done is we've talked about relationships between not categorical variables, but quantitative variables. Think about everything we did in chapter 3 with the LSRLs and the scatter plots. When you were comparing height and weight or whatever, it was always two quantitative variables. Now, for the first time, we're going to look at what happens if I ask you to investigate the relationship or the association <clears throat> between categorical variables. And here's a quick example. Um, this is actually example, it's problem 4.25 in your textbook. And it's comparing the relationship between whether or not a student smokes and whether or not their parent smokes. And one thing to just kind of think about, obviously, is that both, if I talked about student smoking status, which is this variable, and if I talk about parent smoking status, both of those are clearly categorical variables, right? Um, the values are not numbers, they are values. The two values of student smoking status are does not smoke and does smoke. The two values for parent smoking status are, the three values, excuse me, are neither parent smokes, one parent smokes, both parent smokes. We would, in this case, say that student smoking status is the row variable, just because the way this table is laid out, it's in the rows, and parent smoking status is the column variable. And sometimes I have a tough time remembering which one goes which rows or columns. I always think about columns, think about Greek columns, they go vertically, um, so it helps me remember it sometimes. We would say that usually the way you lay out problems involving categorical variables are in, in a table like this. This is called a two-way table. You're going to see a lot of two-way tables in this chapter. Interesting, a bird just ran into my window. You hear that noise? That was a bird running into the window. So you get a little something here when you uh, watch the videos online. Um, anyways, this would be a uh, two-by-three two-way table because it's rows by columns. There are two rows because the row variable has two values, and there are three columns. Okay, moving on to the next page. One of the things we talk a little bit about is something called the marginal distributions. Marginal distribution. All of that's a fancy term for the totals of the rows and the columns. It's the numbers that would be in the margins. So those purple numbers are the marginal distributions. Um, and so, for example, if I wanted to talk about visually display the marginal distribution of student smoking status, I could actually make a little bar graph. I could say here, student does not smoke, student does smoke. This is actually, I would have to label this axis as student smoking status. There are two, and then over here it'd be number of students. And then I would pick some scale, I don't know, like this maybe, and it would probably look something. Student doesn't smoke is about up here. And student does smoke is about there. Okay, pretty simple bar graph. And I could do a similar bar graph if I wanted to do it for a parent smoking status. I won't do it right now, but there just would be three bars. Okay, so the term marginal distribution is the numbers in the margins, it's just the totals. And this number right here, this orange number, is the table total. It would make sense that's the total number of people in the table. Okay, the bigger, more complicated topic is something called a conditional distribution. So we're going to look at what is the conditional distribution of students who don't smoke. Um, and so what I've done here is I've noticed that for students who don't smoke, so we're just talking about this one right here, okay, that row adds up to 4,371, and then for each of the values um, for the other variable, the parent smoking status, I've calculated a percent. So you see, what percent is this number of this row? Well, down here, I did 1,168 divided by 4,371, and got 26.7% of students who don't smoke have neither parent smoking. That's what this number means, right? It's out of all the people in this first row, what percent of them have neither parent smoking, okay? And so you end up, you can do that for every value. What does this number mean? 
This means given that a student does not smoke, what is the probability that one of their parents smoke? And the answer to that question is 64.6%. What does this number mean? Uh, of all the students who don't smoke, what percentage of them have both parents smoking? Okay? That's the idea of a conditional distribution. A conditional distribution is you're limited to either one row or one column in a table. And you end up for two-way tables making a lot of percents, okay? calculating a lot of different percents. Now, one thing you might do is you actually might make a bar graph of the conditional distribution of students who don't smoke. So if I wanted to make a bar graph of this conditional distribution, I would put three things down here. I'm going to put neither parent smokes, one parent smokes, both parents smoke. This is parent smoking status. Over here, I'll do percent, and I'll just do 10, 20, 30, oh boy, bad choice, 40, 50, 60. Okay, neither parent smoke would be about here. Okay, and actually, let me kind of do it this way, just to make it a little more clear. Let me do it this way, keep my color scheme going. Then this one would be about 64%. It's going to be a nice big number. And this one's going to be in orange, a little bit bigger, something like this. Okay? And obviously, you might, you might do you know, some shading or something. One of the things with two-way tables, when you're analyzing two categorical variables, it's not like you can just make a single scatter plot. It's not like you can. there's one R value that kind of tells you everything you want to know. One of the problems with two-way tables is you end up making lots of different, calculating lots of different percentages, taking, making lots of different bar graphs. So I'm going to try to go through and show you lots of the different things you could do. But unlike scatter plots, where clearly if I gave you two quantitative variables, boom, you made a scatter plot, boom, you made an LSRL, here that's not the case. There's some choices you have to make. So I'm not going to go through this whole example, but basically here I did the, I did say the same thing for the next row. We're doing a conditional distribution now of students who do smoke. So now we're limiting ourselves to this row. And I did the exact same thing. Okay, what does this number mean? The percent, 18.7 percent of students who smoke have neither parent smoking. Okay. Um, what does this number mean? Same thing. 41.4 percent of students who smoke have one parent smoke, and similar thing here. And you could consider yourself making a uh, very similar bar graph, this time for the conditional distribution of students who smoke. Okay, so actually, well, I won't do that, but you can imagine what, it, what that might look like. 